Hi guys and welcome to Game with Johnny and my first ever YouTube video. So please sit back, relax and enjoy. I've chosen to review The Last of Us Part 2 because it's a brand new game, I've bought it and I've just finished my first run through. The game clearly states in its name that it is Part 2, so I don't think it takes a genius to think there is a Part 1 and I'm not spoiling anything by confirming that there is a game called The Last of Us. This game has an R18 rating, but don't panic, I'll keep this review family friendly and spoiler free. So please keep your comments the same, and bear in mind that this is my first video, and encouragement is greatly appreciated. The Last of Us came out in 2013, but I didn't play it straight away. I didn't even know it existed. I didn't find The Last of Us Part 1 until November 2015, when I walked into my local game store looking for a Christmas present. I was idly flicking through the second hand game bin and I'd just picked up a copy of The Last of Us when one of the shop assistants asked me if I needed any help. I turned the game box round and asked if this game was any good. Both shop assistants immediately said yes, it is the best game I will ever play. And you know what? They were right. The Last of Us is set in America after an infection apocalypse has transformed most of the population into crazed, mindless, zombie like killers leaving behind a smattering of uninfected survivors. You play one of two characters, Joel and Ellie, who are travelling across America attempting to deliver a source for a potential cure to a militia group who believe they can develop a cure for the infection. Ellie is the young lady you are currently seeing on screen. For reasons I will not spoil, Joel and Ellie do not leave them the cure, but return to Jackson, a town where Joel's brother lives. Part 2 picks up four years later with Joel and Ellie living in Jackson. If you are new to the franchise, it is worth knowing that The Last of Us is an offline, single player, third person action adventure. Part 2 involves exploring, fighting and killing enemies using a variety of weaponry. It is set predominantly in one city with one character attempting to find another character to kill them. At its most basic, you enter an area search, scavenge for supplies, craft ammunition, kill enemies and move on with the addition of collectibles and weapon upgrades. The game has an R18 certificate because of violence, cruelty, frequent bad language and a couple of what I would describe as tame sex scenes, but in certain countries I have been told these have been edited out. Despite this, everything that is in the game is pertinent to the story and necessary to develop the characters. This game simply would not work if it was toned down to PG-13. It has wonderful immersive scenery, characters and storylines and I am confident that you will love it. If you are familiar with part 1 you will have expectations of where you want the story to go, what characters you want to play, what interactions you want to see and this may lead to disappointment when the game goes in a different direction. I recommend you remove all expectations and enjoy the game as the makers intended. In my opinion, true filmmakers tell the stories they want without concerning themselves with what the viewer wants, and so should game makers. It looks like Naughty Dog have had complete creative freedom to create the game they wanted. If they hadn't, some scenes wouldn't have had to be edited for certain markets and it wouldn't have had a restricted R18 rating, and I would like to give a big thank you to Sony for this. The game gives you everything it says on the box and a whole lot more. It is emotionally involving in a way that I have never experienced with any other game. A great deal of effort has gone into cutscenes where the actors are properly acting and not just doing voiceover roles. I love that part 2 is not the same game as part 1. Many game sequels just rehash the original game in a different setting with a different story. The Last of Us part 2 may essentially be the same, but how you do things are different and extra areas have been added where different skills have to be utilised. I'm afraid here you'll just have to play the game to understand what I'm talking about. I did have several concerns before buying the game, but I was always going to get it, and in the end I couldn't wait. I might not be part of the millennial generation, but I wanted it now, I had the money, so I bought it. Let's be honest, if you like part one, you will be playing this game, it is just a question of when. It doesn't matter what you read on the internet or watch on YouTube, the only question is whether the game is worth paying launch day price for, and I'll give my opinion on this at the end of the video, 
but hopefully if I go through a few of my concerns you can make an informed decision on what price point to buy the game. The development time bothered me. Six years is a long time to be in development. Would the graphics and gameplay be out of date? Now some areas of this game are a bit iffy, but 99% of the game is top notch all of the time. There are areas that have no purpose other than to explore and have such exquisite detail. We're talking about graffiti on doors, cracked floor tiles, rust on metal edges, everything is phenomenal. Also the PS5 is just around the corner and it's bound to come out on the PS5, so should I wait? To be honest, I can't see The Last of Us being that much better on the PS5 and they've promised backwards compatibility so we should be able to continue to play the game on the new hardware with our original disc. It's also going to be at least two years before the PS5 has a decent catalogue of new games so I can't see it making the PS4 obsolete anytime soon. I also wanted to know how long the game was. If I'm paying $120, which in New Zealand was our launch day price, I want a long game. Now my first run through took two weeks and I played this on easy because I just wanted to walk through it and enjoy the story. I'm happy with that length. If I'd started on a harder level, it would have taken longer. I also want replayability. I suppose all games are replayable, but not all of them keep their enjoyment level. Only time will tell how replayable this game is, but at the moment you get weapons upgrades, journal entries, collectibles, and if you want 100% completion, you will not get these on one run through. Finally, I don't want to sound like a naughty dog sycophant, so I'll include my tiny, and I do need tiny criticism, and these are all because I've played part one. You don't play the game characters you expect for as long as you expect. Some parts of the game feel the same. You enter an area, you collect supplies, you stealth kill enemies and you move on. There seems to be less humour between the characters than part one had and their interactions are not as seamless. The antagonistic humour is missing and the cutscenes can seem too long, but hey, I suspect this is all deliberate to stay true to the story and this is only my interpretation of it. As a side point, would I let under 18 year olds play it? Personally I would. But how far under 18? I do not know. It depends on the person. Parts of the game are extremely educational, but parts are extremely violent. But at the end of the day, it's just a game. What is important to me is that the game does not feel rushed to market, and it has that indefinable Naughty Dog quality. Is it worth the money? Definitely yes. Once you play part two, it becomes clear why development took so long. A lot of time and effort has gone into making this game, and the games of this quality need encouraging. So I say, buy it now. I should like to end this video on a cryptic note, or not so cryptic for those of you who have got to the end of the game. She should have left a note. Thanks for watching.